shoot the shot. I'm coming in hot. Welcome in to another edition of the Goose and the Grizz podcast, week nine. We are past the halfway point now. Uh, with me, as always, is my buddy Goose. How you doing there, brother? Good, brother. Coming to you from the Iron Paradise, bro. Me and D Dog just getting it in late night. You know how we do. Yeah, yeah, man. Good to good to show you're working out something besides your mouth, huh? So, <laughs> well, and the fingers, I guess, with the being trade week, right? Got some uh, last minute deals in. You and I, I think, got the last one in, right? We did. We sure did. Yep. Yep. Damn right. Well, let's pause for the cause and let's bring in our guest of the week, Hector the Inspector. Boom. What's going on, Hector, guys? What is up, my buddy? How are you doing today, bro? Everything good. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, we have to after uh, an impressive win uh, versus Alex last week. Uh, won by over thirty-one points. Uh, improves your record to six and three. How you feeling so far this year? Well, uh, I'm scoring really low uh, previous weeks. Um, I'm not happy with my team. I was going but i think i can make a push to the playoffs now um now i got some depth in my bench and you know um my bites are gone so i don't have to worry about that and uh hoping for the best you know i got a tough week i got a tough division and believe it or not our division is the best one if you combine all those uh, teams together uh, players together the the beast and the best um um division in the league yeah, yeah, you might be right, man. And and the good news is, if you're not happy with your team, you have about uh, negative seven and a half hours to make a trade. So, uh, what you have is what you got, unless the uh, the waivers come through for you or somebody pops off. But it's going to be slim pickings. But uh, just to kind of go over your your win here versus Alex uh, C D Lamb coming on hot after his buy, twenty nine points. Derrick Henry and T Higgins with twenty. Got to like that. Uh, beat Alex, and Alex had uh, his top score only got 21. Gus Edwards, uh, Mostert got 16, and Pittman got 14. Uh, but C.D. Lamb's been looking really good for you, man. Ever since his bye week with the Cowboys, he's been uh, getting targeted uh, often, for sure. Yeah, I thought with um, um, this guy, Brandon Cook, um, joining the team, I thought he he was going to get, like, you know, low – um catches but he's getting his catches for sure for sure like doc is hitting him a lot so i'm pretty happy with it uh, i don't like the team but you know fantasy you got to pick you know what it is yeah not bad man 11 catches 191 yards uh no touchdowns in, in this one against the eagles and we'll go over a little bit more because this is one of the games that i was watching but yeah talk about that uh, post uh, buy adjustment, Mike McCarthy said, you know, just give the ball to CeeDee Lamb like all the time, like every time you can, Dak. I don't care. And it, it shows, dude, 12 receptions, 158 yards, 14 targets, 16 targets in the Eagles game. Um, this guy has really taken off for you here after the bye week. I know they can't run the ball, so they ain't got no choice to throw. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So the defense not playing really good, so right. they got They play from behind most of the time now. It's not like that. Re uh, first weeks it was like there was a head that was running the ball really good, but now now this half right now. I like to say that your team just kind of reminds me of like the. Uh, I don't want to say say the special ed class, more like the <laughs> special ed teacher. Uh, because all your players are helping others that seem to be a little retarded. For example, C.D. Lamb helping Dak and, right. uh, and and Mike McCarthy. We know they're retarded. Uh, Adam Thielen helping that retarded rookie out. You got no. Garrett Wilson helping out that retard Zach Wilson. <laughs> um, I mean, you got you know Gardner Minshew who is in there, and he just looks like he's you know inbred. Oh, so come on, not my uncle you know, I mean, Rico, man. Come on, man, I'm doing like that. I mean, hey, they're they're playing good, but I mean, it's very nice for them to volunteer their time to help such special individuals on the football field. Yeah, I, I picked Minshew. Uh, I didn't have no choice. I was picking like the best matchup, but it was the dart. Uh, I had my Lawrence. Uh, T Law was on five, so I had yeah. no choice. Uh, yeah. And before that, he had like 35 points, fantasy points. Garner Minshew, if I'm wrong. 
Um, yeah, he yeah. has a good week, but it is what it is. I came up with the win. That's what's important. Hell yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And you got a big game coming up next week as well. You're playing Sam. Sam desperately needs a win, so he's not going to be uh, looking to fold too easy. You're favored by about nine points right now. Uh, how do you feel going into week 10 with your team? Uh, like I said before, um, my buys are done. I just got to deal with Pacheco. I think he's he's some buy. Um, but I think I, pre I, pre I feel pretty confident. Um, good matchups and hoping that C.D. Lambs and Garrett Wilson – I'm hoping Evan Rogers come back. That's what I'm praying. Oh, that's what you see. He's on the ball. Like, yeah. Sure so I'm hoping that, and you know, things get better with Henry. Um, hopefully he gets. I don't. I don't want to say this. Hopefully he gets hurt. So Britney <laughs> Spears come back. You know, so Britney Spears can can come and you know. Oh damn! That usually you usually don't see that. You usually don't see the owner hoping for an injury to a player on his own team. But I get what you're saying. You have yeah. Tajay Spears, and you want. You want um, to to shoot straight to the moon, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who knows? If, if Henry leaves, I might say stick with him. I'm not for sure. Yeah. Let's see how Wilson and Rogers does. But let's see. I I wouldn't wish I wouldn't wish Henry away too quick though. Now, because it, it looks like you're pointing towards the playoffs, and the playoff schedule for Derrick Henry includes two games versus the Houston Texans. Which, if you know anything about Derrick Henry. He loves destroying the Houston Texans. He hates so that team. I'm telling you, man. I mean, it, it. You know, you might want him to, you know, you know, nick something and not not play. Tajay Spears is a hot name. He's doing good. Don't get me wrong, but that team, when it flows through Derrick Henry, and I think Will Levis has given him a little bit of a spark. That's gonna. I think that might bode well for Henry late. So if you, you know, if you make the big dance, you might be pretty happy with Henry after all. I hope. I hope. Uh, this is my first time drafting Henry, and it's not been good. But it's steady at the same time. It's right. Not Very true, man. Well, good luck to you on that for sure. And yeah, we want to get your thoughts on some other things here too. Uh, Goose alluded to it. The Eagles and the Cowboys, the Eagles held on despite CD. Uh, even at the end, CD was the target, got the ball at the one-yard line, but couldn't get into the end zone to win it. Uh, did you happen to watch much of this game? And yeah. if so, what were your yeah, thoughts on it, brother? I did. Um, actually, they should have went for the field goal when they um, um, did the turnover and uh -huh. they went for the uh, field goal. And the second one, they should they, another field goal, they would have win the game. And they were sure. right there. They, I mean, bad calls, bad decision by the coaching staff. But uh, Dallas should have won. That Who's game. the coach for the Cowboys again? Who was the coach <laughs> for them? Ah, uh, fucking McCarthy, man. Fat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, his name is yeah. literally, I think, I think his name is actually fucking McCarthy. He just goes by Mike to keep it PC. I think they would have won the game. They would have gone for the field goal. And then yeah. less than 40 seconds, they were back in the 20 yards, you know. Um, and C.D. Lamb, they, uh, the last catch, it was kind of close. Oh, yeah. Like, oh close. yeah. On third down. Yeah, I saw that. So it was, um, what was it? It was third and 26. They had a penalty. Yeah. We had three seconds left. Yeah, I'll pull it up. So this is the second down. This is your typical Dak Prescott missing your receivers in the corners and here, here they go F five seconds left and you know here he is just dancing dancing hits lamb Ooh. you know that you know what see that is a problem there right there with play design because obviously you're i mean you know they're they're going to be guarding the end zone so you're, you're they're going to have people deep so if you're going to throw early and hope you get in what you need is another crosser underneath have your running back trail so that he might be able to do that hook and ladder and, and throw it to him, get into the end zone after that. But Mike McCarthy doesn't think that far. Mike McCarthy is thinking of his next cheeseburger. So that's about it. Yeah, yeah. they should have won that game. They should have won that game. They, they should have played the field goal. Don't go for it. You still got uh, man, like two minutes on the clock. You can, right. You got players to go down there quick. Like C.D. Lamb and, you know, they got um, Brandon Cooks. He's out there, so they could have won it, but it is, you know, coaching. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll see, and then that may pop up again, you know. Not, so that drops the Cowboys to five and three, and I picked them to win this one. Uh, I didn't really, you know, pay attention that they was an away game, so they're they, they they didn't. You're not an advantage when you're playing away, especially the Eagles, you know, Super Bowl favorites. But the Eagles, um, were trying to give this game away with those uh, DeAndre Swift fumbles. So um, kudos to the Eagles for closing this game out. 
uh, Mike McCarthy blunder? Will this pop up again in the in the playoffs, or you know, or if you know if they get that far, um, probably will will Mike McCarthy get fired? Probably not. Nah, <laughs> no, because that would be a good decision, and the Cowboys don't do those. <laughs> So the other game we wanted to bring up to you uh, happened all the way in Germany. Sure uh, I was trying to work on my German, uh, my, my, my German accent, but it's just not there. So, you know, whatever. But uh, Chiefs and the Dolphins, uh, Chiefs got the one touchdown win. Um, Chiefs didn't score in the second half after that fumble return and the Dolphins couldn't make up the make up the points. So um, what did what was your takeaway from this game, Hector? What did you think? Well, the, believe it or not, the Miami defense played really good. Uh, I think they almost mm-hmm. scored that score, I believe, and uh, they was doing pretty good. It just uh, Miami cannot win with a good team. Uh, they got talent to be the 500 up team, but they can't, and they got to go to the to the hump because play, after you know players are coming, they got to beat those top teams like you know Bills, Bengals, Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, even the T Law and them, the Jaguars, you know, they're up there. I like that team to the, you know, to the end. Yeah, you just you just made a good point. You're right. The Miami has had a really good season. They're six and two, but boy, had they spanked on the bad teams, and they had definitely yeah. struggled against the good teams. I wanna I wanna uh, highlight uh this sequence of events here, and then Jordan, you can like comment on this. So this is uh, this is the first and ten in that fourth quarter. These are the last four plays of that game. And here we have Raheem Mostert just plowing, plowing through that really good Kansas City. I warned y'all about that defense. It's no secret now um, through these defenders. And then here he is again, just boom, take it away. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I think we should run that play again. It seems to be working pretty well. So here we are at third and 10. What do we call? And Cedric was 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 open on that, wide open. So here's the fourth down. This is the controversial play right here, right? This is this is you know to tie the game, maybe go to overtime. And there it is. I was surprised by the throw before that play. That okay. throw, I don't know what he had. Mayo <laughs> on his border. That throw was horrible. Germany must look like it looked like <laughs> it looked like it looked like me throwing with my left hand, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of Tua, that I like that was yeah it was I, I was surprised just because, you know if there's one thing I would say about Tua, it's that even though he has some shortcomings with uh, arm strength and things like that, um, he normally is pretty smart. He, he's pretty situationally aware, and you don't normally see mistakes from him from a you know from a mind standpoint that late in the game. But that throw was so off, it almost made me wonder if there was a problem with the read or just a problem with his footwork. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Is the German uh, German uh, win, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, everybody in the stadium on the uh, in the end zone farted at the same time. That was probably it. You know, those beer cheese farts can really be a problem. Hey, hey we can't we can't use those excuses to come playoff time now. Yeah, Chief, these excuses are, are all fans have on times like that, bro. <laughs> Damn. Oh uh, yeah, and and I'll I'll segue that into uh, the player that I was watching, Tyree Kill. I was surprised. Um, there was a, you know, he he was eight catches on ten targets, sixty two yards, no touchdowns, not a big game. Chiefs kept him in check, and you know, if any team was going to know how to keep him in check, it'd be the team that he used to play for, right? But I would have thought that he would have gone off a little more. Thought he would have been a little more motivated, but I did read something that was interesting that the Chiefs pushed for this game to be in Germany because they didn't want uh, the home crowd to boo Tyreek. And we all know what might happen if he gets, you know, motivated a little bit more to run by some people. So uh, kept a little quiet in this game. I was surprised. I thought he might turn up. I think it was not boo because he was traded. He he's not. It's That's not true. like he got out of there. He got traded, so he they might. You know, giving a uh, stand ovation. I think I believe. I think they would not bull him because they had great moments with Tyree Hill, man. Yeah, and, man. You know, they kept those fans up because of Tyree Hill. You know, the touchdown, electric touchdown. And um, yeah, uh, I think they were triple team Tyree Hill most of the yeah. game and I mean, Waddle open. Uh, they were bracketing him. Yeah, yeah. and two are missing a bunch of times to Waddle. You see, Wa- Waddle, Waddle was, I, but Waddle was playing the hokey pokey all game though. I mean, he was he was in the game. He was out the game. He put his yeah. left foot in, got it stepped on, took yeah. it back out. You know, I mean, he 
in and out constantly. But um, I'll tell you, someone who is in the game now and just getting his career started, though, was who uh, Goose was looking at. Will Levis. Banana boy. Banana Rama. Lost to the Steelers. He had a respectable game. His pick came at the end. He didn't have any touchdowns. The one interception at the end, 22 for 39, 262. But he's looking like he might end up having the second best year out of the four rookies that that went. So did did you see any of that Thursday night game to where, you know, it gives you any hope for Will Levis and the Tennessee Titans? Hmm. Um, it looked rough, man. It looked rough. It, it's kind of what you expected from a, from a rookie. The Steelers put it on him. They were pressuring him all game. He finished. He got sacked four times in that game. Uh, threw a pick. No touchdowns. Um, and they just couldn't get anything going. Um, th- those deep balls that were working against Atlanta, they just weren't falling against the Steelers. They had him. They, they had a better defender. Better defender. DeAndre Hopkins had a quiet game, relatively eleven on eleven targets. Did, did you see – forget Bananarama. Has anybody seen Joey Porter Jr. out there? Hey, this kid looks good, man. They're going to need him too because that's the one thing that you normally can do on the Steelers is pass on them um, if that pass rush doesn't get there. But uh, I think he was a steal in the last yeah. draft for sure, and he went yeah. to the right team. That, that's for damn sure. But, yeah, I mean, he didn't look that good. I mean, Will Levis kind of came back down to earth. You know, once you get a little bit of tape and you have a good, a well-coached defense and a hard-nosed defense and, well, shit, T.J. Watt, you know, I, it kind of went as you might have expected to. Um, but, I mean, I think he's got some potential. I, I hate, you know, I hate his diet. But, hey, if the guy can actually, you know, do some things and make the Titans relevant again, and like you were saying with T.J. Spears, I mean, they got a good young running back. Yeah. They got a – a, a young quarterback, um, you know, their the receiving core is going to need some work because D Hop won't be there for too long, and it's looking like Trey, you know, Burks is just not going to be able to stay on the field. Yeah, uh, he just got to stop drinking coffee with mayo, pull sugar on that. <laughs> we'll teach I'm him. Telling you, man. Heck, <laughs> we'll teach him, Hector. Right, bring him, bring him to Orlando. We'll take him to one of these Puerto Rican yeah. joints. I know. <laughs> Mayo ketchup. Mayo ketchup. Oh, hey, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Texans went over the Bucks. It was, you know, an, an insanely thrilling um, game, you know, with a bunch of scores at the last minute. 39-37, yada, yada, yada. Bucks lost. Their defense looks like garbage. Uh, we just gave up the most amount of, of yards thrown by a rookie quarterback in NFL history with 470 uh, I'll let you all take it from here because I'm. I think I might vomit in my mouth. <laughs> he's he's good. I think uh, he looked like I don't want to compare because it's too soon yet. But he uh, he stays in the pocket like I don't know, it's too early. Like Tom Brady, you know, not even close. But like he stays in the pocket, he moves and he can run, but he rather throw it. And I want to see him run the next couple of games. Uh, let's see how the defense uh, play him. Uh, the next couple of weeks, because we know they're gonna throw, so maybe give the ball to Pierce. Now that I got him, you know, see. I can, I can see it. I mean, this this guy has been electric. I mean, regardless, you know who who's got him. I got him. You got him. Um, this guy's fun to watch. Uh, I mean, the way he just de- delivers the ball is, is so smooth, like butter. We saw it at Ohio State, right, Jordan? Uh, and guys usually look good in college, and and then they, you just don't see this part right here translating to the next level and the dude is just dicing people up um he's going through his reads he's looking like a pro and and i mean he picked the right team to dice up because five five touchdowns almost 500 yards i mean have we ever seen this before from a rookie quarterback Uh, i don't know Uh, yeah uh sean watson looked great his rookie year until he got hurt yeah, yeah. Um, well, Ohio State, he had great receiving core. He he was uh, he had JSN. He was throwing to Wilson. He was throwing to Chris Olave. So it's not new for him right. to throw the ball out there like that. He had good receivers. Um, now with Tank, they uh, Tank Dale and um, the Brown, the Brown Nico. guy, uh, Brown, and then um, Nico Schultz. Nico, yeah, those guys gonna eat now like a lot. But to me, he, none of those guys are like alpha wide receivers. Even Tank wow. Dell, he came away out of Houston. And I remember watching him, um, you know, play against, you know, in our, in our conference. The dude was electric. I mean, don't get me wrong. 
but he we haven't seen this either from from a you know a receiver that small uh just cooking people up on the on in that secondary uh this is impressive not only for cj stroud but tank dell wait what we said tank dell though right Dell, though yeah I, I watch him a lot in college so um i i got him almost on my leg except the one um and this one uh, yeah carlos obviously i was uh drafting before carlos so that was not good uh he picked some good players by the way that yeah, i was yeah. thinking to get and you know now he's you know doing really good now but yeah tam there i was watching him and a few others i didn't get none of them <laughs> yeah cj stroud man what i think is most promising for him because you know there's always most rookies have a hard first season right and it's not he hasn't been perfect but you know normally when you have a rookie that has everything lined up against them it looks like everything's lined up against them you know uh trevor lawrence you know his first year with urban meyer just did not look good but then what i think is amazing about this is he has no run game right. he's got no alpha wide receivers like you said his right. offensive line has been injured all year yeah the defense is improving but still not making enough stops to where you know they're not he's not having to win them games he's put in that position and he's overcoming it that is the sign of a generational type of QB. And I'm not saying that he's definitely going to be, but Houston has the, I mean, if they don't ruin this and I don't, I don't think they will, they seem to be a little better managed right now. They have the makings of a contender, especially in that division. It's not like it's the toughest division where you have to beat Patrick Mahomes twice a year, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, anything else? I don't think so. So this time for real, without me trying to avoid my uh, bucks and that horrible loss, <laughs> Hector, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Great win over Alex. I appreciate that, him being in my division and me taking an L this week. Good luck with your game versus Sam, and uh, happy week 10. Good luck, guys, the rest of the, uh, the year. Thanks, man. Thanks, brother.